The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is here. I'm Liam, a Roblox developer on this platform focusing mostly on 3D art. But today I'm gonna show some scripting. Okay, so um, I will be specifically showing y'all how to make this effect right here. Little slashy, slash, slashy thingy. I don't know. It's fucking 1 a.m. I'm, I'm tired. Let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so uh, first of all, we gotta grab this little module right here. It's a script that basically just emits one particle, one of these 3D objects. We gotta grab this stuff right here. Try it in studio. I will link down in the description, don't worry about it. So yeah, just grab this stuff and we will get started with the main scripting part. Okay, so I'm in the empty base right now. Pretty cool stuff. Just empty, I will just be doing an empty base bit because I'm gonna showcase this on like a tutorial. Let's not do anything special with this place. I'm gonna just showcase the effect, nothing else. But yeah, I just recorded the whole session, all of it. I just made the whole tutorial. But then my dumbass realized I didn't record. I did never start recording that shit, so I just talked for 20 minutes straight over nothing. So that ain't good at all. But let's just let's just do it now. Pretty cool. I'm a bit fucking 1 a.m. shit right now. Yeah, let's go. So firstly, what we gotta do is we have to bring out the effect handler. Uh, as I spoke like one second ago Here we have it. It's basically just a module you can create effects right here It only creates one effect. It only creates one mesh and twins it. You have to keep that in mind So you have al always have to require the script in a loop just letting you all know that so you can spam out Let's t take the effect hand right here drag it into service script service. Very good Now we also need an effect object. Of course, I'll be using this little sphere um, y'all have to get this on your own. I'm not gonna be sending y'all a sphere mesh. That's pretty dumb. Y'all, y'all can probably just make a union out of a normal sphere and just scale it down using non-uniform -uni scaling. But yeah, this model also works with anything else. You can do any other shape if you want to, like a uh, smoke or anything. I don't know. Do do whatever you want. Experiment with it because this model could be using. You know, you can make it like a smoke trail when you run and stuff like that in the games. Uh, so yeah, it's not only bound to make slashes. But that's what I'll be showcasing for the day. Now, four things. Highlight group, effect part, effect object, and time. Don't forget about time. Let's just for take these three right now. So the first we need is, of course, a highlight group. Let's create a folder called highlight groups. Okay, good. Now we have the folder. Let's put this one effect object inside the group. Group it. Inside of it, create a highlight effect. So this is basically how you get the effect I have on my Twitter. It's just using highlight and neon part materials, okay? So let's create a little blue fill, fill color to this. Drag down the brightness. Alright, looking crisp already. Let's move it a little bit down here. Alright, this is looking pretty good. Let's do ultra outline transparency to one, so we don't have any outline or something. We don't need it right now. We only need this little one part, since it also blends in with other parts as well, you see. It creates a little scene mess effect. Pretty cool. Let's call this model... Hi... Uh, it's group one, actually. Group one. Okay, so now we have group one in here. Let's take the highlight out inside of group one, so we can now duplicate parts individually by only using one highlight. So now we can have one highlight for all of these. Pretty, pretty good stuff, pretty good stuff. Pretty useful, so we don't use too much highlights, since highlights is like, I think it like caps to maybe 50 highlights per, I don't know, in, in, in focus in your camera or something like that, I don't really remember. So we have to use this for both performance and overall just, Roblox Studio won't let us do anything other than that. Now, we don't need this effect of anymore, we can just put it in replicated storage, store it for now. Let's now create a little of a script. We need, to, we need to do the the main things, right? Effect script. Let's call it that, since this is the effect script. We we use this for the effect, of course. Uh, actually, let's just do this firstly. Let's create a part. Make it four 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 by four. Scale. Let's add this little square right here. Let's put it right here or something. Call it effect part. This part will be where all of it will be emitting, all of the particles. This script I have created uh, emits the particles inside of the part, like it does with, you know, particles does in the par Roblox own particle engine. So we can have a little bit more freedom with how, how it should be emitting, if we wanted to emit flat and, you know, emit a little bit flatter, maybe like this, you know, 
we can, we can experiment a lot of with, with this stuff, right? So let's create this effect part. We have the highlights groups. That should be it, really. All right. Now we have to do local effect part equals a game workspace dot effect part. There we go. Local effect object. The little one I stored in the replicated story. Remember the little neon part that the, the, the main object equals a game get service. Replicate storage dot effect object. Here we go. The only thing we need now is the local. Now we need basically the main thing for this, okay? We need the effect handler, of course. We need to use this module. Why would we not use this module when we have it right here for free, even? So let's just do local effect handler, since that's what we call it equals to require because you can't just go with script.parent dot you know th those kind of stuff you have to require a module for it to be working at least all we gotta do now is script.parent dot wait for child effect handler there we go now we got the handler in here as well okay so as i mentioned earlier this script only emits one particle this is for you to have a little bit more freedom how you, how much you want to emit and all that stuff I could have only done like a loop inside of the handler, but that wouldn't be very good. Yes, let's just do this so we can, you know, experiment a little bit more on our own ends. I'll be using a while to do loop for now. Let's just do a while to do loop. Why not? It's we don't need it to do anything fancy today. Let's do now task dot wait. We can't make it emit infinitely. We need to make it emit once per 0 0.001 second since we, we don't want it to be emitting like infinitely or too little, you know. So now, let's call the effect handler. Effect handler, create effect. Yes, sir. See here, in the script, we have the create effect function. Now we just need to put in the highlight group, effect part, effect object, and time. All right, so we start with the highlight group we have right here, group one. Let's do game, dot workspace, dot highlight groups, dot group one yes sir now we have the group one in here now we have the group that's 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 crazy that's crazy now we just need the effect part so we just do effect part and now we just do need to have the effect object of course okay so now we have these three now we only have we have we have these three now so that we don't we only have time left to be fixing up so i want this to be you know playing uh tweening on a ran random speed so i'm gonna do math dot random uh three maybe and then seven so that's the three the, the two values it will be randomizing between now we don't want it to be tweening for seven seconds until it disappears so we're gonna divide this by 10 since math at random doesn't use any decimals we can't use decimals for math at random right so we, we have to divide it in order to make it 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 very good so that is it that's how you use this module let's just uh, make this transparency to one anchor this so it doesn't fly away using the gravity now let's also edit the pivot point so we can rotate it in a funny way like I did this is edit the pivot point to be up here so you can now rotate it you know around like this and let's just run you see here isn't that amazing now we have the main effect functioning okay so it might not look like mine did, but I, that is not because of the script. I used the exact same script for mine. But now, I used a lot of more lines to my code, added more different objects to mine. So I'm gonna showcase what I did right here. Okay, so we just did one effect part, right? Mm, neon. Let's make it neon so you can see it a little bit better. Let's make it red. Okay, so we only used one. In the script, we also only used one create effect. We only created one effect. So what I did is that I firstly used this, which is three of them. I used one effect part, uh, like you see here, effect part, and I had effect part two and effect part three, all right? I also, for highlight groups, did not only do one group, I did two. One for sparks and one for, um, you know, the main, the main slash. So let me just remove this, all this stuff. Uh, this is bad stuff right here. As you may see now, I used one for the spark color, you know, the one we did earlier. And also one that was just white for sparks. 
height. Now, I also used two different effect objects, which was these, uh, one little bigger and one little smaller, since it does, the size of this, like the size of this is what size it will start on, so you have to keep that in mind also, when making this module, you can't just make one this big, or you can, but then it will be this big when it emits, and then scale down, so it's kind of custom in that way. So I use this one for sparks and this one for the maze slash, alright? <coughs> Let's put these two into replicated storage and remove this first object. Um, okay, so now for my script, instead of using using just these lines of code in here, just one like one part, one object, one in the handler, I use this. Part one, part two, part three, object one, and object, and the effect handler, and then two different groups in here. I also made a quarantine wrap function so I could um, change the task of weight to how much it will wait for the sparks to emit so it will wait a little bit longer for the sparks to emit than it will do for the slash all right so that should be it let me showcase this now let me remove this and you will see i use the same uh, the same module as always the same module everything i just did a little bit more customization than i did for the tutorial yeah here you can see it's the same functional stuff to it it just I just made it a little bit more customized and played around with it. You also really also do play around with this module if you want some cool results. Uh, please send me in DMs and tag me on Twitter when you post. If you post something, you played around with this effect a little bit. I can check it out and you know maybe reply with like a cool emoji or something. I don't know. It, I would like really like to see what y'all can come up with this stuff since it's not only bound to use slashes. It's bound. You you can do whatever you want. Like a, as I said, smoke effect, smoke trail, or. Maybe it's a kind of explosion, I don't know. Do what, do whatever you want, play around with this. And maybe tag me in some post or creations y'all have been creating. Really appreciate it. So yeah, it's basically it for a tutorial. That's really all I have to say. I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope y'all will be happy with me sharing my knowledge for the first time. I really don't like sharing my knowledge, something I lie. But sometimes you have, you, you have to be a little bit kind and don't gatekeep. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm feeling generous today with this little module. I hope y'all will have good use of it. Maybe play around with it. One note though, don't use this for large scale games. This this is very you know heavy on your computer. This is not good for performance at all. It's spawning objects and tweening them. It's spawning 3D objects. Very very mu much non-performant, of course. Just letting y'all know that. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend y'all using this for your games. More just for showcases, maybe a game up to three players or something, but not over like five players that would literally crash your computer. Also when creating these little parts, if you all actually want to make this a little bit more performant, make sure these m objects are low poly as fuck, since yeah, low poly is good, high poly is bad. Unfortunately I made this high poly just for the sake of showcasing this tutorial, making it a little bit softer and a little bit more round. But since these are played so quickly, making it low poly wouldn't make it a problem. Don't worry. So if you want some performance, make sure to make this low poly. Yeah, that's really it. I'll see y'all guys later on. Remember to follow my Twitter if y'all aren't already doing that. So yeah, see ya.